Hello, it's me, Daryl, Florida Catholic guy. Just out here in the backyard, sunset. Another beautiful day. And uh, it actually was a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Uh, let's see. Uh, you coming out or staying in? Stupid dog doesn't know what he wants to do. Well, he's not stupid, but strange. <laughs> Anyway, uh, like I said, beautiful day. It was around 90 degrees, but uh, dew points in the 50s and low 60s. So I was just, uh, I just finished my walk. I forgot to bring my camera with me, or my phone actually. My phone that doubles as a camera. Uh, so, didn't get a chance to talk during my walk, but. Uh, I figured I'd go in the backyard here so you can listen to the air conditioner now <laughs> and me but uh just gorgeous today I mean it was up around 90 but 90 with low humidity and I, this is going to sound strange but 90 with low humidity and we got a pretty decent breeze it's a light breeze, but still, still nice. Feels like 75 up in Maine. And I know that sounds nuts, because you think 90, 91 has got to be hotter than heck, but it, it's not. It just isn't. I mean, maybe it's because I'm getting used to the heat, but I mean, it makes all the difference in the world where you have low humidity. And uh, what it is, is uh, it's a low pressure off the coast of South Carolina. Not a tropical low, just a regular low pressure. And, uh, well, the Carolinas are getting cooler, cool weather with rain. What it does is uh, wind flow gives us uh, cooler, drier, or well, not really cooler, because. 90 isn't really cool, it's about average for this time of year, but uh, it gives you drier, a lot drier air. In fact, uh, the uh, weather forecaster on the local channel that I watched said that if we had this set up in the wintertime, it would be a cold, windy day, but in the summertime, it's beautiful. And it's going to be like this at least through tomorrow with a zero, almost a zero percent chance of rain and uh, Wednesday's only a ten percent chance and then it goes up Thursday and Friday into the weekend get back into a more typical uh, hot and humid pattern let's see if the stupid thing comes out this time hey he did <laughs> yeah There he is. He wants to come out with Daddy. <laughs> You're a good boy, Shadow. Even if I do say you're silly. Yeah, he wants to lay down with Daddy. But anyway, it's, like I said, it can't be nicer out here. I mean, nice night to sit out. Actually, thinking about getting the fire pit going. It's that nice out, you know, it's the lows down here right now, this time of year in the 70s, but it's just gorgeous. I mean, I don't know what else to say. One of these days, hopefully by Wednesday, probably going to barbecue some burgers, take advantage of this uh, nice weather that we're getting, because... In the summertime, we don't get many of these good days like this. This is rare. Usually we get our uh, hot, humid weather during the day with our late afternoon and evening thunderstorm that comes through. And uh, one thing I will say is when we do get to thunderstorms, 
it uh, it does cool things off. It still stays muggy, but you know it'll go from temperatures to around 90 to you know 75 in like 10 minutes. So you know it does does help out a lot getting that thunderstorm in the afternoon. But a day like today is just beautiful. I mean I. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, uh, I mean, I just love it. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, actually, there's, uh, some good clouds forming over here. They're not thunderheads by any, well, they might be thunderheads, but they're not building or anything. More, more of a puffy cumulus clouds. Of course, having a Hewlett sunset. You can see kind of a fog bank toward the uh, water. Speaking of the water, I plan on bringing the boat out tomorrow. I haven't been out in a while. I gotta start taking care of the boat a little better. I'm still in the back of my car which uh, isn't good for it to sit like that because haven't even rinsed it off or anything and uh, it's very very hot in the garage because it's not under air in the garage so it's not too good for it so probably after I get home tomorrow I'll uh, have to rinse her off and bring her in the house and stuff but uh Fourth of July coming up, uh, another few weeks away. Yeah, I got some stuff in here I gotta burn. <laughs> might be uh, might be time to bring the old uh, fire pit back to life tonight. That time of night where the mosquitoes start coming out. Excuse me. Wow. So yeah, just uh, putts around in my backyard here. And uh, my dog's watching me like, what are you doing? Oh, that's the other new thing that he's doing now, my dog I'm talking about. Is I don't know if you can see it. The grass isn't that long. I mean, it's pretty long, but uh, it was just cut last Wednesday or Thursday, I think. But this thing, talking about my dog, gets scared to step on the grass. Yeah, he gets scared to step on the grass for some silly reason. And, uh, I just don't get it. I mean, it's not like I haven't seen any snakes or anything out here. And he hasn't gotten bit by anything out here that I know of. He just gets afraid of the tall grass and I have no idea why. I call him sometimes my chicken dog. <laughs> and I don't know. The other day he, uh, that was before they come to mow it. The other day he was so chicken that, uh, he took his uh, number two on the uh, cement uh, patio thing we got out here. And I uh, told him that ain't gonna work. And the next time he just, he just stepped off it and did it right off the patio, which is better than going on the patio, but 
you know, lately he's been, he's been hesitant, but he's gone out there. And I think I've told you before that the weird thing about my grass here is right here by my house, the grass grows long, but if you go out into the yard a little bit, it's not that long. Of course, now it's starting, it's getting more even now. I think the, uh, the fertilizer that my uh, lawn maintenance guy has given it uh, is helping, plus all the rain that we've been getting, that's been helping too, so it's uh, getting more even now, so that's actually good because, uh, you know, it's, you shouldn't have grass that grows four inches here and two inches down there, and, but anyway, it's, uh, <clears throat> that's how that's going, uh, they had a rocket launch a couple days ago, uh, I think it was like three or four days ago now, it's at 5.30 in the morning, so I wasn't up, and, uh, even if I was, I wouldn't have seen it anyway, because we had a pretty good rain shower going through at the time, so, uh, Better luck on the next one. Someday I'd like to get to uh, Space Coast to watch a launch from down there. It's, uh, I think, two and a half to three hours away from me. But uh, I'd still like to do it someday. Probably better in the winter because during the summer it's sit or miss with the rain showers. Uh, yeah, there's a couple things I want to talk about, but I'll probably wait till uh, the next video. I want to talk about, well, maybe I'll do a little bit here. getting uh it's more getting political with uh this latest uh police shooting in atlanta and the facts from what i saw in the video from what i watched with videos on youtube commenters on youtube and social media you know, as well as uh, the news media. You have a guy that was drunk. His uh, blood alcohol level was 0 .108. Point oh eight is the uh, legal limit, and he was point one oh eight. So he was drunk. No question about it. And he was passed out in the drive-thru at a Wendy's. Um, from what I hear and from the video, when the police got there, or maybe before he got there, I, I think they said it was after the cop got there, they had him move into a parking spot. And that's where the officers began the uh, investigation into the drunk driving. Now they, I don't know if they actually gave him field sobriety test. I think they did, but they had him blow into the portable breath test, which is where he blew the point one zero eight. Uh, so obviously they're gonna make an arrest for operating under the influence. So, while they're trying to handcuff this guy, he uh, starts attacking the police officers. He, at one point, he punches one and uh, starts rolling around on the ground with 
I think there was two officers. And uh, this guy grabs a taser from one of the officers. And eventually he gets up and runs away with the taser. So the officers take off after him in a foot chase. And during the foot chase, the guy turns his head around with the taser and fire, tries to fire the taser at the cop. Now there's a couple different reports. Did the, did the taser hit the cop or not? You could see where he, where he tried to engage a taser. You could see the, uh, the light on the taser where he was trying to uh, hit the cop. But uh, at that point, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's when the officer pulled out his gun. One officer tried tasing him again. Or I, don't, for, I don't know if it's again. I don't know if they tased him while he was on the ground. But one officer tried to tase him and it either didn't work or the taser had no effect on the guy and so the other officer shot him and uh, subsequently died now a lot of the uh, leftist and BLM and uh, all these people are making a big deal trying to say that well, a taser isn't a deadly weapon. Well, that's a gray area because the very same Atlanta police fired an officer a few weeks ago, I think during the, the other riots they had. Uh, and in that case, the city's trying to say that the taser is a deadly weapon. Now, in this case, the city's trying to say a taser isn't a deadly weapon. So, for me, it doesn't matter whether it is or it isn't, because when you shoot a taser at a police officer, it can very easily become a deadly weapon, whether the taser kills you or not. Because what happens is when a taser hits you, you're stunned and almost almost paralyzed for a few seconds and during that time the guy that tased you is able to run up to you grab your gun and shoot you so an officer has a legitimate fear for great bodily injury or loss of life in this situation which is a justifiable reason to shoot. And I think the fact that they used the taser, that the one officer used the taser with no effect, or it didn't work, I mean, that makes it even more justified. Because when you point or shoot any kind of weapon, I don't care if it's a hammer, an axe, a gun, a knife, a taser, or whatever, at a police officer, more than likely you're going to get shot, no matter what color you are. And uh, that's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if somebody pulls out for no reason and tries to tase me, I'm going to do what I have to do. So, the way I see this going is, if it's fair, if you get a fair trial, which in today's day, I don't know if an officer can get a fair trial. But uh, if he does, he would be acquitted. Not only would he be acquitted, but he could get his job back very easily. And, uh, you know, even this whole, uh, oh, what's his name? The one that, one in Minnesota there, uh, uh, George. 
uh, George Floyd. They have now come out with the fact that he had meth in his system, he had fentanyl in his system, and he was a felon, served time. He uh, pointed a gun at a woman during a robbery, a pregnant woman during a robbery. But, you know, all that, that really doesn't matter because the only thing they're going to look at is they're going to look at what happened in this situation. I mean, his previous actions could be brought in, but I tend to not think it will. I think they're just going to look at this situation and if they have medical experts that can prove that he died of the overdose and not the uh, knee on the neck that could prove problematic but uh, I think at the very least at least in the Floyd situation that's enough for negligent homicide or manslaughter or whatever you want to call it second degree murder is going to be a little harder of a burden to prove but I think they get get them on something they almost have to otherwise Minneapolis burn not that it's not going to anyway but uh, and that's what I'm afraid of is for this case in Atlanta the jury's gonna feel if they don't convict that there'll be riots so they'll be almost forced to convict even if there's no evidence and uh, that's a scary thing for this justice system of ours it's hanging on a thread right now I wouldn't be a police officer today if they paid me a million dollars an hour it's just not worth it you're gonna have now mark my words you're gonna have police officers that are gonna get killed because they're afraid to take out their gun because they're afraid of the backlash that would come their way if they have to shoot somebody so instead they're gonna end up getting shot mark my words it's gonna happen and uh... And no, it won't be all over the news. No, it won't. It's a sad situation. I hope to God that President Trump wins re-election, because if not, we're in a whole world of hurt. Anyway... I've rambled on long enough and it's getting darker out. So, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good night. God bless you. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye.